Hello there and welcome back to our second episode on learning how to program computers using C++. You're still with me, Muhin Numbak, as your tutor in this course. So we're going to start from where we stopped at in the previous video. Uh, in the previous video, the first part, if you didn't watch it, I recommend to go and watch it to get the basics. But uh, if you're already a beginner of C++, you have some idea, then it's not necessary for you to watch. But if you're totally, totally beginner, you don't have idea about C++, please find the link of our first video in, uh, in the description of this video and uh, watch the first video first, then proceed to this one at the second part. So today we're going to look at uh, the next topic which is uh, strings as i told you that i'll be following the w3 schools uh syllabus in this course so <coughs> the next topic is what is strings so what, what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new file and name it strings so to create a new file ctrl shift n when you press ctrl shift n they'll create for you a new file but i want to i want to just remain with this same code so if I want to remain the same code, I simply come to file and then savers. So I'll come here where I save and then I'll change this one to 9. I put 9 because I want to remain organized. So I'll put 9 and then put C++. Dot, uh, just put strings. 9 strings.cpp. This extension must be there. Otherwise, if you don't put the extension, uh, then... Uh, your code won't be considered as C++. So I'll just begin here at the main function. Aha, uh -huh. so we begin. So a what is a string? A string is a what? Is a collection of characters. So when you join characters together, they form a word. So a word is a string. So a collection of characters, we call it a string. For example, they can show you here that you're having a string called a greeting. And to declare a string, we use a data type called string in C++ and then you follow it with a variable name and if you wish you can initialize it or initialize it later so I'm going to show you how we can make a simple string so to make a simple string I can simply say like we said we first declare it so that's how we declare a string you just write string like this in small letters and then you write a word or a phrase that you use as a variable to define the space that will store this string if i can say name then is equal to and now to store a string oh it is not necessary that you can initialize it from here but it is good practice to initialize it so if i want to store something in this string variable of a name uh, i mean this name variable of a string i'll just equate it and then you open double quotes double quotes like that and then you close so anything that you put inside this uh, double quote will be stored in this name so for example i can put here my name mohindo mubarak okay so it means that this string this collection of characters are going to be stored here in this um, name variable and what made that possible is this keyword of string so if I want to display this, I'll simply come and say C out and then I put out uh, the name. So by doing that, I'll be able to see the name Mohindo Mubarak on the what? On the screen. And there we go. Okay. So a collection of characters, we call it a what? We call it a string, and that's how we declare and initialize a string in C++. Uh -huh. So, there are a lot of uh, functions or possible functions that C++ uh, has put there for you to manipulate your strings. For example, here we're going to begin by concatenating strings. So, to concatenate a string means to join strings. To concatenate strings means to join two strings together. So if I want to join these two strings, for example, I have two strings. Okay, I'll create a new file and save it as um, number 10 and save it as string underscore functions. Okay, so I'll delete this one. Now if, I, if to go and strings, I mean it means to join two strings. For example, I'm going to declare here two strings. For example, the first string I can say is called uh, first name. F 
first and then underscore name is equal to Mohindo and then the second string I'll also say string and then I say last underscore name is equal to Mubarak so if I want to join this string these strings together that's what we call what concatenation concatenation it means uh, to join two strings together so we use a plus to join two strings together in C++ so I can declare here another string and I'll call it full name full name uh -huh. so I can as well just close it from there no problem it will work so if I want to store to join these two first name and second name and store them in full name I can simply say full name is equal to first name then plus last name and then by doing this we shall have our full name so if i print this full name i'll simply say see out and then uh, put out the full name so by doing this i'll have uh, created two different separate string in first name and last name and then i create another variable called full name and then i add this variable to this one that's this process called the concatenation and then we store them inside the full name so by doing this uh, see out full name then it will be able to do what to display for us the full name can you see but this name is joined so if i want to put a space here between i can either declare again another space and then i concatenate it there between but instead of doing that for example i can just say another string <coughs> another string maybe i could say empty empty underscore space is equal to just i put empty space between there okay this free space so if i want to put this uh this empty space between the names so i'll simply come here it will be first name plus the empty space plus last name so by doing that i'll be able to have the space between my what between my name okay but instead of doing that that is too much so we can as well concatenate the manually made strings how do you make the manually made strings with which are not stored in a variable you just open cal uh, bracket i mean double quotes and then here whatever you add there it will be considered as what as a string also so i just add their free space so that we should not this need this so it means that this is one string and when i open this it will be considered as another string and then uh, this will be the last string so by doing that we'll be able to do what to have the name with a space between so that's how we concatenate strings so I'll proceed uh, to append strings append strings means uh, it's just also just the same function okay if uh, c++ gives you another function which can help you to do what to concatenate strings let me comment this one you know if i comment then it means that it will not take any action so i can as well say uh full name is equal to first name so it means that here at this moment uh in full name we have only the first name so after doing that i can append the last name on this full name by simply saying dot append and then i pass here uh the first name so by doing that i'll be able to add the first name on the last name this is a new function of c in c plus plus it can help you to concatenate another variable on the other okay i hope you've understood that i just first create full name i mean first name and then i store it in a full name and then after i append or i add using the append function of c plus plus uh the last name so if i want to put a space it means i have to put here space and then i put dot i mean i put plus then uh, it means that it will append this free space and then uh the first name on what on this c plus plus i mean on this first name i mean the last it will append the here is supposed to be last name sorry last name it will append the last name on this first name which has been stored in a what in a full name so append is also does also the same task as what as the plus so we proceed to numbers and strings so here if you use numbers and strings 
uh, there's a warning they say that uh, the operator plus can be used on concatenating both numbers and what numbers and strings so it means that it may cause a what it may cause a conflict as you can see here we are having this first integer as 10 and this one the second one as 20 so we are using the same plus that we're using to concatenate strings to uh, sum up these two integers uh, but you can as well have uh, a string and this string so if you add them up it will do what it will make them 120 let me try to explain this by practice uh, so I'll comment this uh, it means that uh, if I'm having an integer a a and B and inside a I have 10 and then uh, B I have uh, another 10 so if I want to add this to let me say I have another C here okay so if I want to add another this another two I mean if I add these, add these two and store them in C I'll simply say C is equal to a plus B so that one will do of course the summing up so if I try to put out it will simply be you can guess it will be simply be of course 20 why because both of them are what are integers and have been added together but if one of them is a string let's say that this is a what this is a string and uh, sorry uh, assume that all of them are string okay now we're having here a as 10 and this is going to be now let us see what will be the output so what do you think will be the output the previous one was 20 but you can see here sorry the output a plus b is got this oh it was still loading after i was i was too fast the output is nothing in fact it's crashing why is it crashing because they're supposed to uh to put one in what in double quotes in order for them to be stored as strings remember in a string you must put double quotes in car integers it doesn't matter whether you put double quotes or not so you can see the output of 10 plus 10 is 110 so it means that instead of adding them it concatenated them so if your values are strings it will concatenate them instead of doing what instead of adding them so you have to be careful with that so we come to another function called strln so strln i mean uh, string length it will enable you to find how long a phrase or a string is so to use it you simply add that one dot size or dot length so dot size and dot length they do the same work okay so if you put dot size to show you just the length of a string and as well as you put dot length it will show you the same one so if i want to get the size of uh, uh this name how long this name is i can simply say c out and then you see we have here the first name and the last name so all of them they are stored inside full name so if i want to get the size of full name so i just put here dot what dot length so it's a function so if you put dot length and then call a function on a certain string it will tell you how long that string is as you can see the name Mohindo Mubarak is made up of 15 characters so I can as well do that by maybe uh, saying the name so I have to add here the what the name itself so I'll put there plus a uh, full name uh, I can put is and then I put here full name dot length then I put plus again long so if I run it the process something is wrong what's wrong oh 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 let us see let us see let us see something is wrong something is wrong uh, first name is full name long 
uh, let us see what could be the problem so if you want to see the problem you simply place f2 so by pressing f2 they'll explain to you what the error is so you have to expand this so you can see here they're saying no operator match for operator plus uh, let us see what's wrong with it first name plus full name is full name dot length plus this okay let us first remove this because it's bringing an integer if you run it it's okay uh-huh so if we put plus full name dot size let us see uh let us see this one also they don't tell us they don't allow us to add them together with a what with an integer so what i can do i can uh, instead of doing this i can just uh, uh instead of concatenating i can add it like this which is no problem because this one will return an integer and you cannot uh, concatenate an integer with a what with a string so i'll put like this and then i put uh, long so by doing that it will give us the working output so you can see the name Hindu Mubarak is 15 uh, it is is 15 long <laughs> I don't know it's, it's, it has 15 characters okay so we cannot add this integer with a what with a string that's what I was trying to explain so I proceed so size and length all of them they do the same you can as well put the length can as well put the size uh -huh. so let us go deep and look at uh, how to access strings so a string is an array of characters okay a string is uh, a what a group of characters so when you shall look at array you shall understand what is meant by the array but uh, just a string is a group of characters so if you want to access a, the, a particular character in a string you simply use the square uh, bracket we shall look more we shall understand what's meant by this square drop a bracket more deeper when you reach the arrays so if you put a square bracket uh, you'll be able to see what a specific letter inside the what inside your string or be able to access a specific letter inside a string so if I want if I have for example uh, if I want to access the only the first letter of a certain string so I can simply say C out and then I put out uh first name and then i specify maybe zero so all the string uh values or the character arrays they begin from where from zero so by doing that you can guess the output the output is going to be the output is going to be letter m okay the output must be what must be letter m i don't know why it stopped uh did i store anything in first name oh it is crashing because i had commented uh a place where i i let me put full name it's supposed to show us the first letter let me run it you see the first letter is M so it means that we can access a particular letter by access I mean by just putting the square brackets and uh, the, the index of that letter so if you put beyond for example we checked previously uh, our name was stopping at 15 letters so it means since we are beginning from zero if you want to access the last letter you have to put 14 because it will begin from where from zero but our human counting you begin from one normally but you see the last letter of uh, this full name since they told us 15 previously so the last one will be what at index uh, uh, 14 so if you try let us try to put uh, the what out of range index because our name is not this long so you see it will cause an error and I can hear the error tone uh, because uh, we try to access a wrong what a wrong index value so that's how we access a particular 
uh, index value. Maybe I want to access the letter f in the fifth, I mean the sixth index, then I have to put what? To put five. So what you should note that in the, all the strings, they begin with the what? With the uh, letter zero. I can as well change that particular letter. For example, I want to change the first letter only. I can as well do that by simply saying full name zero is equal to maybe I put X. Okay, so I mean that in the name string, the very first letter which is zero in position zero is going to be replaced by what? By X. And you can see here I put single quotes because it is a single character. We only put double quotes on uh, what? On uh, strings. So if I run it, you can see the output. Uh, sorry, let me print out the whole word. I have so to run. You can see the first letter, which was in position zero, has been ex uh, replaced with what? With uh, with a character, which is what? Which is uh, X. So that's how we can access a particular character in C++ strings. Uh huh. So let us look at user inputs. How can you collect strings uh, using? I mean, from the keyboard. So to collect strings from the keyboard, we use we always use C in. Okay, C in. So this C in will enable us to collect a certain string from the what? From the keyboard and uh, it consider the what the white space i mean it doesn't consider the white space so if i have for example let us look at um, i'll create another file i'll save it as string input in put okay so i'll come and delete all this maybe so instead of uh, getting them here i want to get them from uh, the keyboard okay so to do that we use the c in is there also an a standard library function so i just simply say c in and then here the signs change previously when you're using c out the sign we are facing on the left hand side but here we are going to make them face the right hand side so i'll put c in and then uh, i put a specific uh string that i want to store in when someone scans or when someone puts the name from the keyboard so i can put full name okay so it means that everything that will be good from the keyboard it will be stored here at this moment so after I can uh, display it by simply saying C out, put out a uh, full name. Okay. So you see, I create a variable and then I try to get that variable from what? From the string, I mean from, from the keyboard and then I display it. So let me run it. Uh -huh. so you can see our console is waiting for us to put the what the name so it means that it is now at the line number 19 so instead here you will come to the keyboard and put mohindo mubarak uh -huh. so let us run this so when i press enter so can you see can you observe what has happened our f name has been chopped off even the second i mean the second name has been chopped off beginning from the white space so what you should learn is that the c in function it does not consider the what it does not consider the white i mean uh, the c in function does not consider the white spaces okay so when it finds the first white space it skips it okay so let us learn how we can get rid of that so to get rid of that we use uh get line function get line function will enable us to, 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 to even scan uh, a what a string with a free space and how do we do it i can simply say get line and then i pass a, a what uh, a function with a name i uh have -huh. so the function will be c in and then the name where i want to get the name which is 
uh, first name which is first I mean okay let me use full name sorry full name so uh, let us run the, this I have so it is waiting for me to put the name Mahindo Mubarak so you can see even the white spaces have been scanned but if you use only the C in it will not be able to do what to scan the white spaces so I hope you have understood that and uh, the namespace of string okay so see out we use uh, it is a namespace of what of std i'll not even write anything here it's just the namespace of std so if you if you don't have this std uh this one and you want, you want to access it manually so we do it like this std then put the string and then we can uh, declare string and uh, here we can do what we can print a string using std so let us meet in the next uh topic which is uh math aha so let us look at math so math function they help us to perform basic mathematic uh, operations so the math operation or the math function it help us to perform uh, basic mathematics or even not just basic but even advanced mathematics uh, operations so it is just a uh, inbuilt library of c++ and it will help us to perform different mathematic operations for example, e among the things that we can use for this math uh, uh, in Butte Library of C++, we have uh, we can simply find a maximum between two numbers or different numbers. For example, instead of me writing my own algorithm that will calculate a maximum of a certain range of numbers, I can use the, these marks to find which one is the more uh is, is the maximum before i mean maximum than the other or the most bigger than the other number so to do that uh i'm going i mean to, to elaborate this i'm going to create another um function i mean another file and i'm going to save it as uh as 11 C++ math okay I'll leave it like that CPP math so there we are so I can remove all these so assume that you're having two integers a and b where a is equal to uh, 33 and b is equal to 67 so if you want to find which number is max uh, maximum than the other we don't need to write our own logic we can simply use that max a uh, function of a math uh, of C++ to find out which number is the most maximum. So to do that, I can simply say, uh, for example, C out. So I'm going to just print it directly without even uh, uh, store it, storing it somewhere. So I just say max, and then I can pass uh, two numbers, uh, which are I have A and B. So I mean A and B. So it's going to print for us the maximum so if I run this function and you will see the output as 67 because it's the maximum so by doing that you'll have used the math uh, function of uh, C++ so I'll duplicate this line by simply pressing ctrl D and then comment here and then uh, uh, there's another function which is min so this one We'll uh, find out the minimum of these two numbers and then do what? And uh, print it out. So that's how we can simply find it. I um, mean, that's how we can simply find the minimum of uh, a certain range of numbers. So, uh, what's this? I clicked on wrong part of function. Sorry. I'll delete it. Okay so that's a math operation of c plus plus okay let's look at other uh, other math uh, functions of c plus uh, plus we have mean we have looked at that max we have we have looked at that i uh, have so other function include the c math here this one uh such as uh, it will help us to find things like a square root 
uh, rounding off numbers and the logarithms and uh, others this one are inside the what the c math however if we want to find for example a square root of a number we have to first include this uh, library or in a c plus plus project others if you don't include the, this library the math function i mean the math library to automatically be included but if you want to you find something like a square root rounding off of a number the logarithm of a number you have to first include the what the c math so to do that i'll first include it here include c math there as the library then by doing that i'll be able to do what to perform things like finding a square root for example if i want to find the square root of a big number i don't need to do that logic by myself i can simply just use that math function and then i put this sqrt and then i pass uh, a number that i want to find its square root for example 9 and uh, the output you should expect to be 81 i mean sorry it should to be 3 <laughs> to be 3 the root of 9 is i mean the square root of 9 is 3 and the root of 9 is uh, 81 so uh, the root number of 9 is 81 so if you were the square root number is na is 9 of 9 is 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 <laughs> the square root number of 9 is 3 and then the square of 3 is uh, 9 okay and the square of 9 is 81 that's what i was trying to say sorry for that uh -huh. so in case of for in case for us to find the logic so mathematics i mean uh, the C, C math can do for us the logic in a simple way. For example, if you want to find the logarithm of 2, instead for you to catch it by yourself, uh, this C math has an algorithm that can help us to do that in a simpler way. So we have other functions that you can come and practice on your own free time. Uh, this ABS function, it is also a function of this C math to help you to find the absolute number of x in case in case you pass x as a certain number a high equals it will find this one will help you to find the arc sign of uh, x this one will have will help you to find the arc sign of 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 x this one arc cos this one for arc sign this arc tan this one will have to find for you the tube root of a certain number so all of them even the exponents eh, they are here so in case you want to use uh, uh, a, uh, a certain math uh, function or you want to implement a certain math function in your what in your C++ project, you don't need to write all that algorithm. For example, finding a tangent, arc tangent, all those. If you want to use those, you don't need to write that algorithm by yourself. You just simply include this library of C math and then come and look here uh, for what you may want to. For example, if you want to perform a very big logic like uh, finding a power of uh, 1000, so you can simply use this function of power and then it will, you'll pass a certain number and the power that you want to raise to it and then to do what? It will find for you the, the power of that number. So you can come and play with these functions in your free time. Okay? So without wasting time, we shall go to other part of our, of our, of our topic, which is booleans. So these booleans are a type of data, of course, that will help us to find something if it is true or false, yes or no. It has two states, on or off, true or false, yes or no. That's what you call a what? That's what you call a boolean. So in simple terms, if you are uh, meant to create boolean, you just declare it using bool in C++. So let me create another file. I'm going to save this one as uh what 12 and then uh, uh c plus plus booleans so i rub all this okay so uh to declare boolean you just simply say bool and then uh, maybe you can say maybe is happy okay so this can store only two states either true or false so if i want to initialize it i can say is it code true that's how we do we st that's that that's the state that it can store or false one of the two so if i want to check out the, its output i can simply use c out and then put out so what you should expect 
we shouldn't expect the word true as it is it will print one in case it is true it will not print the word true then if it is false for example is happy is equal to false it will do what it will print false i mean it will print zero not the word false so it is either one or zero one or zero one is for true or positive and then zero is for negative or false so that's uh, those are the two states that a boolean can store we shall understand more about these booleans when it come to uh, if conditions okay so we proceed okay we go to boolean expressions we have this boolean expression like this one uh, you can use this one to check if something is greater than the other so if you say 10 is greater than 9 of course it will turn what it will turn whether if it is true it will turn 1 and if it is false it will turn 0 so for example this expression is uh, showing true 10 is greater than 9 so it will turn what it will turn 1 or true otherwise if we change it less than 1 then uh, i mean we change it like 10 is less than 10 than 9 then it will turn false and then that will be uh, displayed as a what as a zero so we'll go to conditions after being introduced to booleans so we have uh, remember in operators we are introduced to um, uh, conditional operators if you still remember let me come back conditional operators that we use for comparison now uh, the comparison operators uh, so those operators we are going to understand them here in conditions these ones we use them for what for comparison for example this equal sign will ch help us to check if something is equal to the other this exclamation mark and then uh, equal it will help us to find if something is equal i mean is not equal to so this explanation mark means like is not is not equal to then um, the greater sign will help us uh, will check if something is greater the less than will help something is less and then greater than or equal to it will help to check if something is greater than or equal to that number and then uh, this less than it will help to check if something is less than or equal to a certain number so let us come back now to conditions and look at how we can use these conditions so in conditions of six plus plus we use a should i call it a function uh, an operator called if okay if and else so we are going to begin by looking at the if statement so to check if statement it will help us to check if something is true or false so i'm going to begin with the if statement so i'll come and save this file as uh 13 remember you can get these files you can download them the work files on the link in the description of this video if you want to aha uh -huh, so we're going to check i mean you're going to uh get introduced to conditional or i mean to conditions uh -huh, so we begin the if condition so i can have uh uh two numbers and i can use to check them whether a set for a certain operation so to do that i'll just put if and then i put here my operation then after i put this curl bracket so if the condition that i'm going to put here will be true the thing information here will be executed otherwise uh, it will not be executed for example i can put here let me initialize here an integer called age okay int age is equal to 18 oh no, it's got 19 i mean okay 15 okay so this program that we're going to write it's going to check if some someone is mature or not so i'll simply say if and then i open this bracket and put here the condition if age is less than uh 10 i mean 18 that's how you know someone is mature or not so if age is less than 18 so of course we shall say uh someone you are not mature because if the age is less than 18 uh that person is young okay so if this condition i mean this curl, things in this curl bracket will be executed in case this condition is true so i'll echo uh sorry 
and I'm using I'm writing another language <laughs> see out and then I'll put out you are still young okay so in case this age is less than 18 then this condition it will return true and then this condition will be executed otherwise it will not uh, execute this condition so you can see the age is 18 so is 18 I mean the age is 15 so is 15 less than 18 of course yes so what should you expect you should return uh, you are what you're still young so the output you see you are still young why because 15 true is less than 18 otherwise if i change this equal sign i mean this sign and i make it if age i mean okay let me change the age and make it maybe 25 then uh, it will not say that you're still young okay it will display nothing why because it will have to skip this bracket because it will turn false 25 is greater than 18 so this will be false so if i if i run it you'll see the output is nothing why yet we're having this uh printing why because age is 25 and 25 is less than what is less than i mean is greater than 18 so this one uh, this condition will be what will be false so that's how we use the if condition so we have another condition another type of condition called the nested if which is else okay the else part so the else part will be the second part of it like if this one is not true then the else part should be true so to do that you simply attach it here i'll not create another file for that okay or we'll simply attach it here after writing your first if then you attach here another else so here it will it will it will execute one of the two brackets it will execute this first bracket in case this condition is true or it will execute the second bracket in case the condition is false let me comment here if the condition is true aha uh -huh, so to execute this one uh, if the condition is false okay then to execute this second one so let me see out and then uh, so in case age is less than 18 we shall say you are still young then if age is greater than 18 it will say this one let's say you are mature is that a spelling of mature hmm i think it's c it is t okay you are mature okay so in case the age is less than 18 it will execute this else otherwise it will execute this the second one so they execute one of the two so if i run this program to process and you'll see you are mature why because our age is 25 so if i make this age um uh maybe seven uh and i run it you see you are still young why because our age is seven i can as well uh, get this age dynamically from uh, the keyboard by using c in age and then uh, i'll be able to get this age in from the keyboard i can even first see out and ask them uh, how old are you okay so i'll first ask how old are you and let them enter their age using this c in and then after i will make a decision whether they are mature or young so if i run this program so you see the output how old are you i'm 19 then you can see you are mature okay so that's one of the way we can use the if and else part i had now what if someone enters 18 I mean if you want to check the real margin itself we have to use the less than or equal to so to use that less than or equal to we simply add here the equal to part and you can see that thing inside 
uh, these condition variables. I mean here in the condition, sorry, in the operators, you'll find the condition operators. So if I use this less than or equal to, then uh, if I run it and I put my age as 18, then it will have to say I'm still young. Why? Because it returns true. And then because for the first A is 18, less than uh, 18, no, it's not less than 18. But this equal sign will make it qualify. But is 18 equal to 18? Yes. So it will have to return true because this second equal sign will make it qualify. And then uh, this one will be executed. So that's how we implement uh, the less than or equal to part of the C++. And you can come and play more with them. So let us go to a nested if, which is else if. So sometimes you need to combine more than one condition together. So to combine more than one condition together, we use the else if. So let me save us. Uh, this has 14. And this one as else if. So I rub all this. I rub all this. Okay. So I can check uh, three conditions attached together. Uh, for example, I have. Um, okay, I'm just going to the same age. So I have int, uh, and then uh, I can say I have age. Uh, so I want to attach uh, all these conditions together. Like if someone is between um, ten and twenty. I'll say you too young. Uh, if someone is between uh, ten, I mean twenty and fifty, I say you you mature, and then uh, I, I can say you old, and I mean you mature. Uh, then if someone is beyond fifty, I say you're too old. Okay. So those conditions I want to implement them using all of them attached together. So to implement them all of them attached together, you use that else if. The else if okay so to do that I can simply say uh, if age is equal to I mean okay is less than uh, 20 then you'll have to execute this first part uh-huh so I say echo I mean sorry see out you are uh, young okay so i want to create another condition so to do that i'll have to put here else but remember it's more than one condition there are like three conditions attached together so if you use this else part it will only execute uh two what two possibilities but i want to make it to be able to execute three possibilities so i have to put else and if okay else and if and then i put here another condition can you see else then followed by if then i can put here another condition so if someone succeeds this part then it will check for this part if i mean if someone does not uh execute under this part it will just check for the next part so you can say if age is less than uh 50 so it means that if this part was not executed it will try to check the second part so it means here it is checking now between uh, 21 and 50 so i can say uh see out put out and say you are my cure okay so aha uh -huh. so what if someone is beyond 50 so i'll say anyone uh who is beyond 50 so i'll have again to attach else if uh age is greater than 50 i can now say see out put out and then say you are to old okay so that's when someone crosses the 50
okay so this will be the last condition for us because it will always check if someone goes beyond 50 ah and then to execute this one you can as well use else because it is the last one and uh, there's no more possibility or you can use else if to check again no problem it's just the same so i'll come here and uh see out and ask the user to enter their what the age so it will be see out put out how old are you okay so after writing that i have now to scan the age from the keyboard which is see in put in age okay so this one will enable us to wait for the keyboard to scan so let me run this program so if someone enters uh 13 and 13 years old you are young okay you are young okay so you, can, you are too young so let me run it again uh-huh how old are you if someone enters uh 20 i mean 30 34 you are mature so you can see it is executing only one bracket even though you're having three brackets but it's executing one bracket even if you have 30 brackets but if they attach together using this else if it will always execute only single bracket so if i run again and uh i put maybe 76 and then you can see you are too old it means that this last one was executed so it begins from here if this condition fails it will check this one if this one fails it will check this one okay otherwise if all, all fails then uh, it will execute no one so it will always execute one of the conditions so here in w3 schools they are using uh here another example they say that if you're having time as 22 uh then it will check if the time is less than uh, 10 then it will say good morning if the time is less than 20 it will say good day and if the time is beyond 20 it will say good evening and that's maybe beyond 20 which is beyond uh, 8 pm and then it say good evening or good night okay so you can come and play with this else if uh they just depend on true or false conditions uh-huh so we have another short way of writing it you can simply use uh, a certain variable and then you just say if then you put here a condition and then it will either execute this first one or the second one or you can simply write the same thing by simply saying if the output it will come here uh then it will turn one of the two you just put um, the results or so if then what we want to receive you put here your condition and then you put a question mark and then you put here one of the two results one of these two results so it will check out instead of writing these three lines you can simply use this one so to check out if this condition is true it will return this first if the condition is false it will turn this second one so that's a shorthand or a short way of writing if else condition okay so we proceed to switches aha uh -huh. so switches they also help us to uh to make decisions as well they're just like if conditions but for them they are a little bit precise uh they execute a specific condition without even checking so what how do they work you switch a certain expression okay you write the word switch or you write the keyword switch and then you put a, a, a bracket and then put an exp expression so you'll check for cases in case this first condition is true then it will have to execute any code or a range of code that is here and then uh, in case it is uh, false for this code for the first code it will come and execute the second one in case it fails then it will come and secure the third one it is if it is there and the last one will always be default in case there was no any other which was found so switch cases uh, uh, depends on expressions and then the cases and then the what the default as well as the break this break will help uh, to stop where the switch case uh, I mean it will help to tell where the switch case uh, particular case should stop so I'm going to show you a certain example of switch case how we can implement them uh -huh, so
I'm saving this file as 15 C++ switch case.cpp so I'll wrap this uh, what is should I do okay I can say max okay int mark maybe in an exam someone will get a certain mark maybe 10 then I want to switch if we get um, between uh, 10 and uh, 30 I'll say fair between uh, so I'm going to create a comment system between uh, 30 and uh, 60 I'll say good then between 60 and 100 I'll say very good oh excellent so to do that we shall use a switch you can either use if conditions or switch so you put switch then you put here the variable that you want to switch which is what which is mark okay so i'll start putting uh, the conditions as you can see here okay so all the conditions i'll put them between them so i'll say uh okay i'm going to switch for the specific values uh-huh so in case uh someone uh, so i'll put here what you call case so the first case will be like if the mark is equal to one okay i'm going to switch uh let me see i can even put like this wait i'm going to try something here and then uh, after doing that then you have i mean sorry you have to put this here i want to test something uh then i put c out Uh, it work. okay so this one works for the specific values sorry it work for the specific values i assume that i'm making a what uh, a simple game i'm going to see out here uh, for example uh, select a choice select an option i'm making a simple game menu a simple game menu okay those are new lines and then i can say a uh, one uh, uh maybe play and then i can print a new line and then i say two scores then a three help And then four, it will be quit. Uh huh. And then uh, that's my simple menu. Then I'm going to ask, see out, and then put out, and then say select an option or oh, enter option enter option okay so i'll going to scan for an option so it will be seen put in so i have to create um, a value that i'll use to to, to get it to, to 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 store the option that the user has selected so i'm going to put here maybe opt is equal to zero by default or i can even keep it as nothing because i'm going to get it from the keyboard okay so here i'll scan it from the keyboard okay enter an option then i'll scan it from the what from the keyboard uh-huh so i'll switch the the option here by simply putting opt opt okay so i'll say in case the user select is one then i can say you selected uh-huh selected what play okay so i will to stop this case 
Uh, so it means that it will be able to execute in case this is true it will execute any code that is here until it finds a code called break okay so break it will stop uh the this option to be uh i mean to, to, to stop the part of this code to be executed in case this option was not was selected so i'll create another uh another case by simply typing case two and then put the colon okay let me make them a little bit organized okay so in case it selects two then i will come and copy this and then paste it here so here i can write any amount of code or any range of code that i want to be executed in case the user selects two okay so if someone selects two uh you selected what scores okay so after selecting that i'll come and duplicate it copy the control c and then control v so in case someone uh selects how many selects three and then uh, i'll say you selected what uh help uh-huh so in case lastly someone uh selects uh four i say you selected quit okay so those are the options that i've made uh, so let us run the program so to run the program simply compile it here so to process oh something is wrong uh see out then you have to put out like this uh-huh so i run program so you see select option oh i have to put here uh, maybe <laughs> uh, you see i did not put here a new line let me uh, be a, let me scan for new line here i mean let me put here new line that it should not should be separated you know i have to just run the program again okay select an option one for play two for scores three for help four for quit so if I put one, you see, the first part of the switch, this part, it will be executed. So I can put here as many lines as I want, as many lines of code as I want to be executed in case someone selects the first option. So you see, you selected the first, you selected play because you entered one. Aha, let us run the program again. You put two, you selected scores i have to run it again we put uh four you selected quit so this part is the one that has been executed now what if someone puts a wrong value maybe put seven maybe six remember six we do not consider it then nothing will be executed so to do that maybe if we want to cover for six we can offer for value that we do not consider for then we use what we call default so we put here another function i mean another part called default and then for it does not take any case because it is the last case in case someone entered the wrong option so i can uh, say you entered a wrong option okay so in case someone enters a wrong option i'll display this why because it will have checked here not true here not true here not true here not true and then uh, it will default or execute this in case there was nothing which was found so i run the program again now let me enter something that they were not expecting like 77 then you see the default part has been executed so that's the main information about c c plus plus switch uh it helped to make specific decisions but for if conditions it was helping us to make a decision at a certain range like less than this or greater than this or between these okay but here it helps us to make 
a decision at a certain specific range so we come to loops so what is a loop so loops they help us uh, to execute a number of code in a certain uh, for a certain i mean for for a certain number of times okay it will help us to execute a number of code as many times as we want until the condition is false so to write a i mean to create a loop uh we simply i mean you have three types of loop we have while loop uh do while loop is part of while loop we have a for loop and uh those are the three loops while loop do while loop and a for loop so let us begin by looking at what at a while loop so just like i told you uh these loops will help us to uh execute a certain code multiple times until the range that we want so assume that uh i want to print the name good morning 10 times i mean i want to print the key the, the phrase good morning 10 times so I don't need to write it 10 times, but rather to use the loops. So let me show you how to do that. So we are going to be like to say that we have three types of loops, the while loop, the do while loop, and the for loop in C++. So to do that, I'm going to simply to save this file, file, servers. I'll come here 15 and change this one to 16 and change it to c plus plus while loops so i'll come and remove this code and then i put okay so a syntax of while loop let's first look at syntax of while loop we write the word while or the keyword while and then put a condition inside the bracket so this condition will be executed until it is wrong when it is wrong then it will stop and then um, this code will be executed okay the one that will be repeated so you see that we want to print the word good morning 10 times so to do that i'll simply say assume that i have my integer this integer will help me to count i'll call it a counter and i'll begin it while it is at zero okay so to do that i'll simply come and say while okay so when you write while it's like you're saying a certain condition i mean uh, and then you put a condition here and then you put a curl bracket uh information this curl bracket will be executed until this condition that you're going to put here is false so i can say while uh counter is less than uh, uh, 10 so it means that as long as it is less than 10 then this condition it should be executed i mean these codes so i can put c out put out good morning good morning i can even attach what I, I can even attach the the counter itself here at the end here maybe i can say here new line and then i can say good morning one good morning two good morning three okay so i'll put the counter here so if we do like this this loop is going to run forever why because the count is not increasing the count will remain at zero and zero will always be what will always be less than 10. so to make this loop not to run forever we have to increase the counter so that it should reach a certain level when the condition is false and then the loop stops so to do that i'm going to say counter plus plus okay so you know this plus plus will increase this counter by one so as it will be running it will be increasing by one by one by one by one so if i run it we'll see our output good morning good morning good morning good morning why is it like this let us see what we messed up with i uh, have a new line i uh, have this counter let's first remove the counter see out uh let me put this new line here at the end here and see what could have been the problem so it is count see out then we are printing this and a new line 
Uh, let me put maybe two new lines. That's okay, I think. Okay, so I run it. Counter is here. Then I run it. Counter is just the name of a variable. You see, we are having good mornings, ten times. So why was it disturbing? Run it again. We are having good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, ten times. So if I want to put maybe out this counter so oh yeah i see the problem i have to put out here the counter okay again put out the the the, the word or the phrase so it will print this counter the way it is and then after attach on it uh the string of good morning so if you do like that it's going to begin from zero up to nine Good morning, zero. Good morning until you see when it reaches nine. So it means that when it reached ten, it checks is ten less than ten? No, ten is not less than ten, but rather ten is equal to ten. Then it did not uh, go beyond that, and then it was false, and then it had to stop beyond not less than ten. So that's how we use the while loop. Okay, that's why how we use the while loop. You can come on and play. I mean, you can come here on the website of. Um, ability these schools and play more with it so let us look at the do while loop so the do while loop will do the same task but for it the syntax will be, will be a little bit slight it will change a little bit slightly so I'll say this one as 17 and C++ do while loop okay so I'll change uh i can still use the same counter no problem uh then for the do while loop for it you first do and then you check you see the other one it was first checking then it does so i'm going to try the same thing okay so i'm going to simply say do so what does it do it do this and then it does the while later it checks the condition later so i'm going to put the same condition that we had from the previous in the previous example so which was uh counter is less than what is less than 10 then we're going to see the difference okay but we are just see out and put out the counter itself and we add uh the string which was good morning with a new line okay so we shouldn't forget to do what to increase so that this while should be wrong at a certain time and when it is wrong or it brings false that's when it will uh, stop otherwise if you forget to increase then to run forever okay so that's a while loop so it's going to increase when it reaches uh 10 or when it is going beyond 10 it will stop but here it will first check i mean it will first run and then check later so if we run this can you see I want to put this one here. I save. So, can you see? It is even including the 10. Why? Because it first ran and then check later. But for the while loop, it was checking first. Why? Because the while is on top. But for the do while loop, it will first run and then check later. And then uh, that's why you see we are able to see what? To see the 10. But this was impossible in a what? In a while loop with the same condition. Because for the while loop, it will first check and then do what? And... Uh, it will, I mean, it will first run and then check later. But for the while loop, it will first check and run later. That's the difference between the do while and the while loop. Okay. For the while loop, it will first check and run because the while comes first. But for the do while loop, you see, while comes first. So if this condition is false, then it will not run this one. 
But for the do while loop, even if it, before it checks, it will run at least one time and then check later. Then if it is false, then it will do what? It will stop. We can use this one in different scenarios. Okay. Uh, so we proceed to the for loop. Uh, so this for loop is also another uh, type of a loop. Like I told you, you have three types of loops. Uh, so this for loop, let me save this one as for loop. Aha, uh -huh. so for the for loop, I will remove this and then uh, use uh, uh, the syntax of for loop. So let's first look at the syntax of for loop. You put here the first statement, then the second statement, and then the third statement. Okay, so this statement will, it will be executed one time, this first statement. This second statement, it will be executed, I mean, it will be the condition of the what? Of the loop. And then the third statement, it will be executed every time. Okay, that's another design. So, for example, they say that um, the first statement will be executed one time. So, I can just simply write my for loop, okay? And then we have to separate it into three parts. One, two. So, you have first part, two part, three part. And then you have this main code that is going to be repeated. Uh -huh. So, the first part in the initialization part, we can use it just to declare something because to... It because it will be executed one time. Uh -huh. So, uh, I'll simply say a uh, counter is equal to zero. So, it means that I've initialized the counter to be equal to zero. Okay? To be equal to zero. And then I'll put here the condition. Do you see the second part is the part of what? Of the condition. So, I say counter is always less than what? Less than 10. And then I can say this one, the one which will be increased i mean to be executed every time when the loop uh, when the loop uh, loops so i can simply say c plus plus okay counter plus plus so this count will be added every time when the condition uh loops can you see this third statement it will be executed every time and this one is just the condition that will be checked and then uh, this one is the Con, I mean the part that will be executed only for a single time. So I initialize it uh, counter to zero or I can initialize it to one for the first time only. Then I check here if it has reached 10, it should not go beyond 10. So it is before it will become false, then it will stop. And then here I'm increasing it. So I can now come and uh, use C out and put out the counter itself. Okay. Then again add. Uh, the what uh, maybe times okay so and then put to say what maybe a new line and then now if I run it you will see I have run it one time two time three time four time and when it reaches 10 it will check is 10 for example it reaches 11 it will check is 11 less than 10 no then it will not execute that part and then it will do what it will stop that's how we use the for loops uh, then you can still play with for loops by simply skipping here okay you can even as well declare this one before you 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 run the loop but the structure should not change the structure of three parts should not change you see this one is also okay. I can declare it from outside, but this part, it should be there. Otherwise, you cannot do like this and then leave it and think it will work. We'll have a mess with the what? With the syntax and then it will not work. It will send you a warning. Otherwise, you have to leave this one part. This part must be there and this must be there and this must be there. Though you may not do some things. For example, if I run here, you see I've not done anything here, but still our program is still working perfectly. Aha, uh -huh, so... We look at something, uh, so that's what you call uh, the for loop. You can come and play with it more here. And then now uh, we look at break statement. Uh, so this break will stop the loop, will stop the loop. So I can put here a condition. For example, I can say, I can put a condition inside the loop. I say if uh, 
counter if counter is equal to 5 then I open the curl bracket and say it should break so what will happen it means that it should break this outer loop so when the counter immediately reaches 5 you see the main loop the main condition is where it should stop at 10 but I'm checking here inside the loop that if it reaches 5 it should stop so if I run this then you see when to reach 5 it will not go beyond there why because we have this break this break will stop the what will stop the loop that surrounds it okay so i hope you have understood that uh we have another condition called continue for example if i want this one to reach uh, 100 and then i make okay i can even remove this condition because i have two conditions maybe if i say is equal to what is equal to 100 okay or i can say if is greater than what greater than 100 then it should stop so it means that it's going to run a hundred times and when it reach uh, greater than 100 maybe 101 it will do what it will stop you see when it reaches 101 it will stop and it has been stopped by what by the break but you see here inside the condition here we did not put anything that's what i was telling you it's not necessary that you should put here i can even remove this and then i'll be increasing it per time here inside the loop i use plus plus but even though i have broken it like that i did not i did not i did not change the what the structure all the three parts are there but i initialize it from outside i check the condition for breaking within the loop and then i'm increasing each time when it loops from the loop inside it so but the structure did not what did not change so if you run it exactly it will be just like that the way it was before can you see 101 and then it will do what it will stop okay so we're going to look at the last part of our today's topic our today's video which is the continue so this continue it will uh, make the loop continue in case it is wrong for example i'm going to print only the odd numbers okay so i'll come here before i print anything i'm going to check so if i use continue it means that it will continue automatically before it does what before it checks again so i'm going to first increase and make sure that i increase here at the top then i put my condition before i print okay so i'll put if uh and then i put this counter i mean and i put another condition here if this counter it is a uh, percentage two maybe equal to zero so if it's equal to zero then man that means it's an even number okay so if you equal to zero or okay, say if is equal to one so that means it's odd number because the remainder of that number is two i mean it's zero is one so if it's equal to that then i'll put a bracket here and say continue so it means that continue it means that it should the loop should stop here and just go ahead and do the next uh, part or the next loop so it will not execute the remaining part so it means that it will not even print the remaining part it will just continue with the next one okay so it in case it find the odd number it will do what it will continue so i hope you've understood that so if i run it you see what's the problem okay so you see it only prints the even number so when it finds like the remainder of one it does what it continue it does not even go ahead it just stops there and go to the next loop you see and then i've been able to do what to print only the even numbers using the continue uh if i want maybe to print the odd number then it'll change this one to what to zero so it will check if it is uh having a remainder of zero that is an even number it should just stop and go to the next loop and then if it's having not having the remainder of zero maybe it's an odd number that will just go ahead and run the whole loop then mean this condition not be executed so those are continue for going to 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 go to the next loop and then a break to stop the what to stop 
the loop so if you want this code you can find them inside the what uh on the link that i've put in the description you just follow that link and then you'll be able to do what to download this code i'll not go beyond here in the next video we shall start from where from arrays and then come to pointers and the functions so i hope you're not missing the next video thank you for watching up to this point please make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel and share this video with your friends see you in the next video